Welcome to survey line coding, or sometimes known as field procedures, or in some cases, field to finish. The next few moments, we're going to go through the line coding process for field crews so that when you're out in the field and you're collecting data, you use the proper coding sequence so that the lines are drawn automatically by Civil 3D when you import your field book or an ASCII point file into the survey database. Now, you want to make sure that Civil 3D is set up with these codes, and we have a line code set that is set up that uses certain codes like a B for begin or an E for end. Those codes tell the figures when it's processed when to start and stop the line, when to begin the curves, when to close the figure. So you want to make sure that your field crews using these codes and they're keying this information in properly so that you don't have to do a lot of editing or manipulation inside the office. Now, you want to also keep in mind that just because you can doesn't mean you should. So there are certain codes that, while they look really good on paper, sometimes don't work real well on the field because you got to remember and recall a bunch of information. So I find that if you use like a noting feature out in the field and tell it that it's a, a right turn, see sketch, well then you have a sketch that has your dimensions on it and you take those dimensions and when you edit the file before you process it or edit it after you process it, you actually use these same key codes or, or, line, or line codes when you're editing the field book file as you process your data in, in the office. So some of this is, is mostly out in the field, but there's some office uh, procedures that you also want to know when using uh, field to finish or line coding uh, inside of Civil 3D. Now, You'll see here as we go through this, I'm going to focus on some major ones, ones that we find are very helpful and very useful, uh, but there's all kinds of different scenarios where you can use these codes. And it's really what I say is keep it simple, start simple, and then as you get more advanced, you can start doing and using some of the more advanced codes and or sequencing. So let's begin with a very basic beginning of uh, field code or uh, line code. So uh, as you can see here in my image, what I have is, is I've got a, a curb line and an, an edge of pavement here. And you can see that what I'm doing is I'm starting the line with a B. So basically that B tells the uh, code or the figure when to start. So I'm saying EPB. Now in reality that would probably be further up the road wherever I'm starting my survey. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to the very next shot. All right, So it's going to draw a line to this shot right here. Well that shot there is a PC. And what I'm doing here is I'm telling it that I'm, I want to put a little curve in here. So I'm using a PC and then a PT to end the line. So PC is beginning the line and a PT to end the line. Now, you also notice that I took a shot in the middle and I just called it EP. The software will pick that up and make that part of the curve as it draws this line. Now, you could also get away with just using three points um, and not using that PT. So if I do the PC by itself, and then an EP for the second shot, and then an EP for the third shot, which is the PT, and don't put PT, it'll still draw a curve through there because when it sees PC by itself, it assumes a three-point curve. And then you can see I'm just going down the rest of the road, shooting EPs, EPs, and then EP. And at the end, I'm putting an E because I want to stop that line. In reality, I may carry that around the curve and that where that E is might be a PC again to actually pick up the rest of that curve as it, as it goes around, okay? Now, <clears throat> you don't need the E, like I said, but sometimes it's, it's nice to have it in there. Now, if you leave the E off and then you come back and you pick up with EP again, then it'll just pick up where it left off. Now, just to keep in mind, Something to point out is if I was shooting both sides of the road, so if I was shooting this side as well, I would want to have this as EP1 or EPL and the other side is EP right. As long as it has EP and then some other character after it and they're unique, then you could actually do a cross-sectional method where I could start here and then come over here and then jump over this side and then jump over to that side and then jump over to this side. So you see I can go back and forth. I like to shoot in what's called a string method, but either method works, and you also don't have to just shoot the string. So if I was shooting 
you know, that EP and started there. And then I went out here and I grabbed that sign. You know, I might call this SGN. And then I could come back and shoot that EP. So you don't have to go sequentially and just shoot that, only shoot that line. You can jump out and shoot other features. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're collecting data. Now here's another example of, a, of an island um, and some different examples. So what I'm doing here, when you're doing the island, I don't like to start on the curve. So I would start maybe in the middle of the curve right here. And then what I would do is go up to this point here and I would call that EP uh, PC. And then you can see that I'm using, a, again, a three point curve as I go around the curve and I'm putting a PT in there. And then over here, what I'm doing is I'm putting an EP, but also notice that I'm double coding this. I'm putting a PSB. I'm telling it that I also want to begin that payment stripe as it goes down um, you know, and shoots off. Now we're going to come back and talk about multi codes here in a minute, but I just wanted to show you that at the same point, I can only, I can have one shot, take EP space uh, PS for parking stripe and MB to begin that line. And then I can continue down shooting the rest of the edge of pavement. And notice what I'm doing here, instead of using a PC, we have another command that is either, um, it's a point on curve. Now you can use OC for on curve. Um, in this particular image, I'm using PO, but the line code is sometimes is by default is OC for on curve. As long as your line code set matches what you're using on the field, it doesn't matter what you use. Okay. So, um, but basically what this does is it creates a three point curve with that incoming tangent and that outgoing tangent. So it fits a curve in between those two shots. All right. And then you can also see I'm using a close command or CLS. And what that'll do is that'll close it back on the beginning of my uh, island. So again, reducing the amount of shots. So if you wanted to, it depends on whether you're doing as built and you need elevation, or if you're just doing it for horizontal location, you could essentially just get, um, you know, have, you know, basically get rid of some of these shots. Um, you know, you could shoot this as a PO and not code in the PCPT. Um, but just keep in mind, don't put PC, PO, and PT. You don't want to mix an on curve shot with a PCPT method. So basically, what I would recommend is pick one or the other. Don't don't do both. 